Everybody's looking great. We want to welcome you. This is the Global Watch International Call. It is January 8th, 2024, 6 a.m. Jerusalem time. And uh, this hour is the journey, which is our weekly discipleship time. But we're also in the midst of a 21-day initiative. We are starting week two, which is the community call of the watchmen. We were in the individual call of the watchmen last week. This week, we're in the community call of the watchmen. And then next week, we're in the end time call of the watchmen. This particular session is entitled Walking in Victory in Days of Adversity. And my lovely wife, in whom I'm well pleased, is going to be presenting. And I will add a little bit uh, as well. And we just want to just emphasize, as you all know, but just emphasize again, the importance of community. It's vitally important for watchmen. It's actually vitally important for the church, but um, particularly for watchmen, because we have got to be trusting each other and hearing from the Lord corporately and knowing how to work together. And we will see great and amazing things happen when we do that. And so Every time we get on one of these calls, we are building community. And so we're, it's why we're, we want to speak life into each other. We want to encourage each other. We want to honor each other. Um, that is part of the community. It's, it builds trust and trust helps us to work together. And uh, this is so vitally important. And of course, the, the, um, the ultimate goal is John 17 that uh, Jesus prayed, you know, his high priestly prayer that we would all be one, even as he and the Father are one. So that is our, that's part of our goal in the watch. That's really the goal of the church. But as forerunners, we have to, we have to forerun this. We have to be an example of that. And we are, we're learning more about this every day. So it's all good. So could we have, um, uh, Kate, let's have you, Kate Keegan, um, Unmute yourself and just open us up in prayer, and then we'll have a worship song, and then we'll get right into it. So, Lord, we just give you grateful thanks for the way you always supply what we need. We thank you for this group. We thank you, Lord, especially for Sue and Fred, Lord, and their leadership on the, this particular um, watch series where we're learning about the crisis. The, what is it? The, oh, the thing of the urgent. What is it? The... Oh, the, the, t <laughs> the tyranny of the urgent. <laughs> the tyranny of the urgent, the crisis of identity, uh, uh -huh. the challenge to our authority in you, Lord. And I just <clears throat> thank you that you provide all the tools we need as you're taking us deeper, as you're growing us, as you're making us more aware and more sensitive to listening to your Holy Spirit. I just give you grateful thanks. So I ask you blessing on this time together that we'd glean and not just glean the, the leftovers, but Lord, would get hold of the the um the body of what you're trying to teach us this morning well there's so much going on our minds are so full of all the different things but lord we want to make space for what you're telling us today so i ask lord that as we make room you would fill it up with this the riches that you've prepared for us today and i just give, give you thanks in jesus name amen amen oh, thank you so thank much you. Kate. that's great susan rao let's uh, get the worship song Okay, this is brand new right out of Israel. And one of you guys suggested it on the Global Watch thread. So here we go. Amen. Oh, wow. <clears throat> Powerful, beautiful song. <clears throat> just tremendous. I, I just have to say, <clears throat> we say this a lot, but I just need to say it again today. I just love getting on to these Global Watch calls and growing with our Global Watch community. It's really remarkable just to, it is such a privilege to get together with people from all over the world who love Jesus and are called according to his purpose and that we, uh, the Lord is growing us in relationships and we are, some of my best friends are people that I've never even met in person because uh, we're we're together on the on the watch calls and it's really quite amazing and it's I and I am so thankful for the technology that enables us to do this and enables us to 
have these anointed worship songs come on and uh, we can just, you know, enjoy that without <clears throat> to have our own, you know, live uh, worship. Although that's awesome when we have people like Karen Davis come on, but um, it is really quite amazing. So anyways, just want to say again, we from Susan and Fred, we love you all and we are just very thankful for every one of you. So with that, since we're talking about community, I thought I'd just say that. <laughs> Go ahead. We're um, you're on, my dear. Well, um, this is a transition night. We're transitioning from the individual call of the watchman, and I hope uh, I'm really thankful for everyone on this line tonight that you're persevering through this. But um, in the years of uh, searching out what the watchman call is all about, it the, we, the Lord really kind of uh, showed us there's three dimensions, at least multiple dimensions, but three of the main ones are the individual call, the community call, and then the end time call of the watchman. And pretty much every time watchman or the watch shows up in scriptures, it will relate to one of those things or multiple of those things. So that's why we're dividing these, these 21 days into three weeks. And the um, <clears throat> now we're transi transitioning into the uh, community call of the watchman and uh, fred you can go to slide one here we'll we have a couple of slides just to hopefully help give a visual to this um i have to know that happens to take my screen completely away okay here we go um <clears throat> and so how do we how do we work um community in the call of the watchman and not in, uh, interfere with other ministries. Um, and if you look at the Bible, the watchmen were watch, uh, walking the streets. <laughs> they weren't, they weren't um, secluded into, well, they didn't have churches at that time, but um, the role of the watchman traverses everything that we do. When God created us, he, um, he created us and declared, now tend and keep your garden. That word keep is to watch over your garden. And um, I, for one, feel like the trouble that we're in today is because we really haven't been very good watchmen over the centuries. So, uh, but we're in a time that is really, I believe, historic and unprecedented. And this role of the corporate, the community called the watchman is going to be extremely important because one can put a thousand to flight, two could put 10,000. What's coming down the road is going to require us to lock shields and to be much more intentional about our relationships and our community in building it. So um, Fred, go, go to the next slide. <clears throat> we have um, the, the model of the watch is really with a centralized vision and dispersed leadership. Let me say that again, centralized vision that's sharp and clear uh, with a dispersed leadership carrying it on. Um, they are the ones that will uh, wield the, the sword and carry the, the um, torches of the centralized vision. So what is that? Well, <clears throat> we've narrowed it down to this. It's communities of prayer connected across the nations, empowering the church for transformation revival and the return of Jesus. And, um, uh, and this requires the following. It requires the fullness of the Gentile church. Um, blindness has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentile church comes in. That's going to be a requirement. It's going to be required to be connected with Israel. We continually talk about Isaiah 52, 8. Your watchmen will raise up their voices, sing together, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord brings back Zion. Isaiah 62, 6 and 7 talks about the relentless watches, watchmen who will be on the wall until he establishes Jerusalem as a praise in the earth. So fullness of the Gentile church, the, the, the whole um, reality of the centralized vision of communities of prayer connected across the nations for reformation and revival and the return of Jesus will require the fullness of the Gentile church connection with Israel. And finally, guess what? 
understanding the biblical foundations of the end time narrative. And that usually puts everybody on edge a little bit. And I hope it's not scaring anybody off. Um, but I can tell you that the more I look into the end time narrative, the more it is fuel for revival in my heart. And um, our, our goal, our, our hope is that as we go forward this year in the community called building up the community call of the watchman, that your heart will be revived along with it. I believe it will. So um, the model for, the, so the vision is centralized with dispersed leadership, but the model is out of Nehemiah. And uh, Nehemiah, for, uh, it, Nehemiah was a tremendous leader where he got the families working together. <clears throat> and as they worked together, this wall was built and it was built in 52 days. That is amazing. Nehemiah 4, you can go to slide three. Nehemiah 4, 17 um, shows this, this uh, model and how Nehemiah built. And he said, those who built on the wall and those who carried the burdens loaded themselves so that with one hand, they worked at construction and with the other hand, they held a weapon. So that requires us uh, to work together, work intentionally, know what we're doing, help each other build up the wall. And uh, not only did they help build, but they carried a trumpet. Uh, Nehemiah 4, 19 and 20 um, says, Then I said to the nobles, the rulers, and the rest of the people, the work is great and extensive, and we are separated far from one another on the wall. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, you can rally to us there. Our God will fight for us. Fred, you can turn off the slides for just a minute. <clears throat> I'm going to just talk. Listen, uh, you know, Fred and I were caught in the war over there on October 7th. And it has sharpened us up to uh, the fact that we are living in unprecedented times. And what and now looking back uh, over the, the weeks that we've been in this war and all of the things that um, have been uncovered in, in Israel, in, uh, in other places, it's just, it's phenomenal. In, in the governments, things are getting uh, unveiled uh, where there's been uh, wrongdoings. Those things are being unveiled. And... Um, <clears throat> I think our own hearts are being challenged in, in these times. And what is God doing in all of this? But you know what I think? I think there's such a, these things are horrifying that they're un, unveiling, but I think it is God's mercy that this is happening now, because what if this stuff had continued to go and really come into its fullness? God is intervening right now. And though it's hard to look at and it's hard to see all this stuff, this is preventing something further on down the line from happening. And I believe that in this unveiling that is going on right now, it's hard to look at. But as the dark things are exposed, guess what's coming up underneath it? There is room for the light to start coming forth. And I believe that we are going to see some power encounters this year. We're going to see that as things get unveiled and God moves in, that things that we've never witnessed before, uh, good things are going to begin to move and dispel the darkness back if we stand strong and, uh, and uh, with the Lord in the times that we have ahead. So um, this is, uh, we are standing in a time of incredible historic significance for the church. And you know, the Acts Church was under duress. Um, it was under a lot of pressure in the hour and the times in which that birthed. And I believe we're in similar circumstances today. And as things intensify, we can put our hope in God that he's got the final word and that we don't have to get dismayed with everything that's around us and get all upset and all what we need to know in these times is what is God wanting us to do? What is he wanting us to say? And stay, stay steady at the gate because as the pressure gets on, yes, it gets darker, but then 
then it breaks it he's always faithful to his word so um that is uh, all i wanted to say about that we can go back on to uh the slides fred i think there's a couple of things slides here that you really have a burning on your heart about the transformational impact of of corporate prayer yes <clears throat> okay can you can you hear me can everybody hear me yes yeah okay so um and this is exciting i hope you're hearing this <laughs> yeah let me let me go to this this is we've got really basically a couple of stories about um about community a community prayer and uh the first story is right here in bakersfield where we live bakersfield california is in the central valley part of california it's um uh, a place where there's tremendous productivity in terms of uh, agriculture. And however, par part of what makes it really productive is that there's a lot of sunlight and then there's uh, tremendous um, irrigation. And so uh, we're really dependent on water, mainly because in Bakersfield, the average rainfall is, where it's almost desert-like conditions. It's, it's very low. And in the last few years, we have been in a drought. So the, what you're seeing on the screen on the left-hand side is um, that's the, the way the Kern River is usually, which is, means it's totally dry. There's no, there's no river flowing but, at all. But did you share your screen? Because people are having a hard time seeing it. Yeah. We can so, see it now. It's fine now. It's fine. Oh, now. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, so Fred, I'm sorry. On the left hand side of the screen is the river being totally dry. Well, um, about a year and a half ago, we had a small group of people praying, a California prayer watch, praying daily, and weren't just praying for uh, okay. for the drought, but we're praying, you know, that was part of what we prayed for. And the group, the groups met every day, different people meeting every day, but probably, you know, anywhere from five to 10 people meeting at a time. So, uh, not a large group of, of people, but one of the regular things that we were praying over was the drought. Well, what happened last year was that we had 400% of the norm, what it would be the normal rainfall. Now we had had less than normal rainfall for four or five years. We had 400% of the normal rainfall. It totally wiped out the drought. And so we go from the, the picture on the left-hand side of the screen, the picture on the right-hand side of the screen. And what you see there is water flowing. And um, I don't know why I don't have the- uh, You have to press your cursor over it, Fred. Yeah, I am, but it's not happening. Oh, well. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Hang on. Uh, I just saw it briefly. There we go. Yeah, there you go. So this is what the Kern River looked like um, at uh, uh, the end, towards the end of last, the last winter, then the winter rains. 400% the rain, normal rainfall. So you get the idea. Um, it's really spectacular. And the river now is not, it's, it's lower, but it's still uh, flowing. So this is, and the point of this story is that there were, um, is that we prayed over it. We prayed specifically, but it was not a large group of people praying and we weren't praying, you know, that wasn't the only thing that we were praying over. But God is amazing in how he answers <laughs> prayers in community. And uh, so, um, so that's story one. So story two, I'm going to go to the next slide. Story two is about um, praying over our, uh, our county, Kern County, 
of which Bakersfield is the main city. And we were known um, to have one of the highest homicide rates in the state. Um, and there were in our, 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 uh, our county of about 800,000 people in um, 2020, we had record record number of homicides. There are 140 homicides. But in that, that I'm just going to interject, Fred. That when I saw that in the December of 2020, I went nuts. I said, "This is enough. I, I don't care who's going with me. We are going to do something about this because it's a bloodshed that defiles our land." And he, he, we were both enraged at the, that. Right. The, uh, yeah. So. So that's what, what we just about. right. So what we did was. We went out every Saturday uh, for about, I don't know, it was a little over a year, I think. Mm -hmm. We went, um, we, we took a small group of people with us, anywhere from two to, you know, 10 people, usually low, on the lower end of things, and went around to where the homicides were committed in the previous month or previous week, actually. We we're going out every week, where they were committed the previous week. And we just, we, we prayed over that area. We prayed for the Lord to cleanse it. We, we, um, we <clears throat> left communion on that particular area. Then we went on to the next area. And we did this for, I think, Sue, it was over a year. We did it for yeah. maybe a year and a half. And this is a very interesting because what we saw was not, not that much. <laughs> uh, you know, you, saw, you look at the, the, the homicide rates for um, 2021, they were 136 as opposed to 140, and 140 was a record number. Well, what happened was we got discouraged and we just said, you know, I don't think this is working. And so we we stopped going out and doing these, these uh, go, going to the scenes of where these homicides were committed. But what we did soon after that was we started praying for a ministry in Bakersfield that is called uh, Stay Focused Ministries. And that that ministry is the, the head guy who's running that, works with gangs and gang members and goes to the darkest parts of the city where all these gang murders and everything are <clears throat> happening and, um, and ministers to them. And uh, he has developed uh, quite a ministry over the years. And he asked us to pray for his ministry. And what we decided to do was that we would pray weekly for his ministry and again, it was not, it was part of our weekly prayer calls for our church. And we would pray for him, I don't know, five to 10 minutes, we'll say, every week. But we were doing it consistently. And it was a group of, it was online. It was a group of usually an average of about 10 people praying online. Well, we've been doing that for the last two years or so. And so we're praying for his ministry. It's not praying directly for the homicides, but it's praying for this group that is uh, dealing with gangs and with the, where, where the homicides are being committed. And so you can see on this slide there, in 2022, the homicide rates went down significantly from 136 to 102. And then we just got the final results for 2023. The homicide rate for 2023, it was 75. It's, it's almost cut in half from the 2020 rates. Now this is, you know, three years later. So, um, but nobody can explain it, you know, because in other cities in California, the rates are, if anything, they're going up. They're not going down. So this is really remarkable. And what we're learning from this is this. Prayer makes a difference. Community prayer makes a difference. Um, and being consistent in prayer makes a difference. But um, what we have to remember is that sometimes it takes time for these things to happen. We want that we want the the results to happen instantly. And we were, you know, our you know true confessions. We were discouraged. We didn't think what, what we were doing was working. But here we are, three years later, and um, our homicide rates are down significantly. And so, we're what that does for us is it makes us very excited and feel like, hey, we're going to keep praying into this because we believe that the homicide rates can go down even more. So, well, the other note is that in California, the uh, the homicide rates are increasing. Right. Are, they're decreasing. Yeah. No, exactly. Exactly. 
So, so um, yeah, so my, so, okay. So here are the, here are the takeaways for this. All right. Community prayer doesn't always mean large numbers. You can have a community with just two or three. And, and in our case in, in Bakersfield here and in California, we had small numbers of usually 10 or less. More is not necessarily better when we're praying over a situation. And it's actually better to have smaller numbers with unity and trusting relationships than it is to have larger numbers of people and not uh, having people on being on the same page. That's point one. Point two, having several people in agreement with each other really multiplies the effectiveness of the prayers. So in other words, we could have had, we could have been praying individually and saying, God, you know, um, uh, help us with the homicide rates in Bakersfield or in Kern County. But when we, but <clears throat> when you have several people and it doesn't take a large number of people in agreement, the, um, the effectiveness of your prayers are multiplied. And this is counterintuitive because we tend to be numbers driven people, particularly in the West. You know, we want to have stadiums filled with people praying and we have had that, but um, we don't, we have not seen stadiums full of people having lasting effects necessarily. So the big event with the big number of people doesn't necessarily mean greater effectiveness. And we just have to, we just have to remember that, that this God does not work the way that we think he's going to work. And just remember, you know, one other thing to remember is what was what was God in David's life and his whole ministry, uh, King David? What was the thing that God got most angry at him about? It wasn't Bathsheba and, and him killing Uriah. It was when he counted the troops. And uh, so we just have to remember that, that in the Global Watch, we are not to count the troops. We are to, to, um, to go as the Lord leads us. And, uh, and, but we are not to, more is not necessarily better. In the global watch so we're our goal is not to have twenty thousand people praying uh over one nation it is just we can do much with uh small numbers so that's my story susan i'm sticking to it susan i'm i can't hear you are you muted oh i'm so glad that you do stick to it i had myself i was coughing i'm sorry i still have a cough from six weeks ago but um uh, fred um you can go to the next slide okay I get, again, I you know that's our story, and we're sticking to it. Is true because what our our vision about is about communities of prayer connected across the nations that empower the church for transformation, revival, and the return of Jesus. We're looking for a deeper expression and for the uh, the effective connectedness between us all. And how are we doing that? We're doing it with. Um, twice daily um, watches. Those of you who are, who are new on the watch, we have watches from 6 a.m. and at 3 p.m. daily, much like it was in Jesus' time where they had the morning and the evening sacrifice. So we're rebirthing that rhythm of heaven in the global watch Monday through Friday. The Friday watch ends, it starts at 5 for the Shabbat, and we take the time off to rest to try to give us that sustainability, that uh, time that refreshes us. So um, it, there's plenty of 24 sevens out there. We don't want to interfere with that. But what we found with the morning and evening expressions is it's a platform for the family to land. <laughs> and it is developing community. And I see names on here that I just love. Fred and I just wish we could jump out of this thing and hug you, but um, this it and what it is doing it is building an effective community, and um, <clears throat> I believe that we will be seeing some new and uh, empowering things in the days ahead. So uh, I've often said when um, when it comes to prayer that um, the effective fervent prayer of the righteous. Um, man avails much james 5 16 calls it that but corporate prayer changes history that's true biblically it's, and it's true historically and i believe it's true for this day we've got evidence of that happening right here in our region so you know if you look in the bible there are a number of transformational kings joash and second chronicles 24 
Joash set his heart on repairing the house of the Lord, and it brought transformation to Israel. Jehoshaphat is one we often quote. I won't take time tonight, but 2 Chronicles 20, if you look through uh, verses 19 to 24, just read those, and it's inspiring how the, um, the, the Israelites band together. What did they do when they were faced with three nations coming after them? What did they do? They didn't pick up their arrows and spears in anger. They got down on their faces and worshiped the Lord and sang praises. And the Lord <laughs> came in and dealt with them. I, I thought it was so inspiring this week to see the, that whole army singing to the Lord. I thought, my goodness, Lord, <laughs> you are going to grant them victory. It is coming, and we're going to see amazing things this year. We're going to see hard things like we just see, see out of Myanmar. But let's call Myanmar forth for the miracles that are going to come out of that. The enemy is not going to have the last stand. We are with the Lord. The Lord is going to have his last say in this. So Jehoshaphat, Joash, Asa was another one who received a word, word from the prophet Oded and removed the abominable, <laughs> abominable <laughs> idols and restored temple worship. Well, you know what Oded was? I think it's a forerunner of the watchmen today who are going to advise people in government. They are going to have the word of the Lord. They're going to advise uh, leaders in their community. They're going to have the word of the Lord and come forth. And I just declare and decree in all of you that tonight you're breaking forth in boldness because you're seeing the sword coming on the land and you're going to be able to speak it out. And whether it's received or not, you are going to obey the Lord and have the boldness and the assurance of God. And you're going to have the wisdom of when to do it and how to do it. This is the hour that's coming upon the watchman now, and we must stand together in this time. So um, you can go to the next slide, Fred. So there's a historical shift, a transformational shift, as uh, this community called the watchman comes together. We get strength from one another, and it strengthens us, and it helps develop our character. Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Oh, come on. Don't we need that today? So um, the example is, again, out of Nehemiah. Uh, Nehemiah 4.18 says, Every one of the builders had his sword girded at his side as he built, and the one who sounded the trumpet was beside me. There was order in how they built. And what happened when they followed that order and, and built into it? That wall was built in 52 days. That's the power of agreement. And working through those in authority builds healthy community and expands the tolerance capacity. We, you know, when we go to church, we aren't the runners of that church. So, is it, you know, I mean, I'm sure we all have issues with various things that we're involved in. But if we're not the leaders of it, then you know we have to work with some wisdom and some understanding when we have um, we come up, up against the challenges. Look at the Navy SEALs, how they are the special ops in uh, how the special ops gain victories because they they know order, they know how to work in order. And um, they also know when when the uh, how to help the leaders when they're not uh, uh, in the right direction. Look at the special ops in Israel, the um, Swords of Iron War. These special ops guys, how they are taking over command posts of the enemy. Why? Because they know how to work in order. They've got their vision, they're running with it, and they're working in order. So I believe that there's a very real call to... Um, I hope that, let me put it this way. I pray that tonight, that the fire of God falls on your heart, that there is half things happening in the earth that is shaking. Everything that can be shaken is gonna be shaken. It's gonna shake our, our mindsets, our hearts with the news. But while we're doing that, 
we're looking beyond it because every time the shaking happening is what I hear is the footsteps of Jesus coming closer and closer. And he is calling the watchman to the wall who will not relent, who will not give up until Jerusalem is a praise in the earth. And so uh, finally, it um, <clears throat> helps us persevere in prayer, Fred. Changes history, strengthens us spiritually and, and in character. But as a result of that, it helps us persevere in, in focus and prayer. And what happens when we persevere in prayer, when we persevere beyond that darkest of darkest hours, bam, the light comes and the light comes in. How many times, I'm sure you've all faced that really dark hour and oh, you just can't take it anymore. Well, God knows you can't take it anymore. And what does he do? Boom, the power comes. What happens in Acts Church, Acts 1, it says, uh, Jesus said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. What did Jesus take them off of? The numbers and what was all going on there? He took the, he, no, I want you to trust in me. I've got my timing. Because when you jive with that timing, bam, the power will fall. And I believe we're in a year that when we wait on the Lord, when we wait to get the right Lord, the right word and the right time, boom, we're going to have a power encounter. Most of my life lives like this thing should have happened, you know, a week ago. And the Lord is saying, no, you're going to wait on me. Let your, your uh, spiritual capacity expand, your wisdom to, and understanding follow me. And I will bring the breakthrough. It isn't all necessarily the easiest way, but it is the best way where there, there will be the greatest fruit. So um, enough said about that. <clears throat> uh, go to the next slide. The, uh, there are going to be challenges ahead. And, um, <clears throat> but like I, and we're trying to fuel the fire that we don't have to worry about that. What we need to worry about is our alignment with God throughout the challenges. Um, we are in a culture of Matthew 24, 4. A 20, Matthew, the chapter of Matthew 24 is happening before us. Wars and rumors of war. There's going to be increased deception, uh, falling away. Um, uh, there will be many that betray one another and are offended. So this is, uh, we're tomorrow night, we're going to be, uh, uh, tomorrow, or on uh, the next watch, we are going to be talking about uh, Matthew 24 and how to handle the betrayal culture that we're, we are in. It's, it's manifesting big time. But uh, there are some tools that God can give us as watchmen to help sharpen us uh, in, this, in this type of a culture. Well, what are the challenges? One is influencing corporate prayer into our local communities and churches. We want to build from local expressions to global connections. Uh, it's okay if you come on these calls that we always welcome you, but I want pe I'm going to challenge people. Who do you have around you? And how can we build these local expressions? We're starting to get questions about that. And I think we'll have to do a special session on how to start your watch in your local region. And uh, it starts with all of you on the wall. Get your prayer partners. Start to get your, your locked shields with others that you can trust so that you can pray together and get raw with each other. Fred and I have a prayer team that I meet with once a week. And it's that prayer team, I, I, I let nothing get not discussed it's got to be discussed out on the table these are the things issues we're dealing with this is raw this is not gar gossip we're seeking wisdom on how to deal with things so um that's the kind of hour we're entering things are getting dark and they're getting harder to deal with the breakthrough is not as coming as easy why because the darkness is increasing but um uh, isaiah promises that when his darkness increases the light will rise 
And that is a, you and I walking together in agreement. So influencing corporate prayer in our local communities and influencing the younger generation. And, to, and it, it, this is the hour of the spirit of Elijah. It's time, it's, these are the times when the hearts of the father are turning to the children, children to the father. Uh, as, as these horrible things happen, everybody's moving together. Israel was very dispersed and, and, and diversified nation uh, on October 6th, October 7th, bam, they were united. Everyone, all genders, all uh, ages were boom, riveted into the, oh, dealing with the, what has was presented them. That's what's going to be happening, both good and evil. But all of it, if we are with the Lord, will be moving the kingdom forward. So um, we need to influence that younger generation. And I'm going to call out the men this year. We're, we're challenging you. We need you on the wall. The, you, the, you bring thing, things. Women bring things. I, I believe it's sort of like the pattern of the IDF. Both the men and the women are fighting together. And yes, we fit and fight differently. And that's to be honored. But uh, there's a, a, an authority in each one of us as believers where we must walk in that authority this year and walk in order. When we walk in authority, we, we will know how to walk in order because we're aligned with God. So influencing the younger generation, getting men involved, and finally, walking in the fullness of our identity and authority in Christ. Uh, there are three battlefields. I wrote a prophetic word about that a few weeks ago. Uh, these are battlefields that I believe God is dealing with us to get his army up into the bridal position um, as he prepares, as he's coming in closer and closer to the earth. So <clears throat> all that being said, um, what are the results when we do, do these things uh, for the last we are encouraging you all to continue building, trumpet this, the, the, the vision of the, what the Global Watch is all about. You've got a trumpet in your hands. If this is resonating with you, you've got a trumpet in your hands. You've got a community around you. Start influencing them and getting in, them into this watchman position, into a watchman community so that the strength of the army builds and the agreement builds and we are our shields are locked for when the enemy comes in like a flood sound the alarm use your voices get yourself mobilized and um and build the community do not keep silent do not keep silent this is when we realized we were thrust into the centerfold of this horrific attack on october 7th the lord just caught our breaths and we knew we were there for a reason he was showing us and i know that as we navigated those days and as we came out of them i felt the lord say do not keep silent i'm asking everybody who's hearing this do not keep silent these are riveting transformational days we are in a historic timeline and um we are all going to be able to uh, start navigating things as the Lord opens the gates, as he opens our understanding. Um, but I, I'm telling you, we're all going to be tried and tested and stretched. But as we press through and lean into God, lean into his understanding, what is he saying? He will deliver us and we will grow in wisdom and understanding and a knowledge of him. And that's my fervent prayer for all of us that this is a year of tremendous growth. Um, Dean Briggs uh, wrote a note here. I'm just going to read it. He says, church culture has a wonderful mix of pastoral teaching and communal functions. That's the church that really is pretty much functional today. But the necessary future begs for a church that will expand its identity and mission with ecclesial territorial thinking. When we realize we are the ecclesia, a prayer dime shift is inevitable because the word itself properly aligns our identity with government and prayer as Jesus intended. The call to the watchman takes the function of the intercessor 
into a governmental place. Why? Because we're building together. We're building with community. We're building with wisdom. And we're building under, under the auspices of Jesus Christ himself. And this does not nurture rebellion. It does not nurture animosity with uh, it, um, um, with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, but what it will do will foster relational strength. And that that is the challenge ahead is the keeping the relational strength as the, the darkness and the pressure comes on. Let us not be in the company that falls away or betrays one another or hurts one another. We are going to talk more about that on the next session. Isaiah, uh, 52 8 is before us and um, <clears throat> we will see eye to eye when the Lord brings back Zion if we understand these principles of working together and praying together and going forward for the kingdom together um, <clears throat> and so I want to put that there and now this is the last slide the last slide please yes yeah, so um, let me just, let me just uh, clarify something when you say the next session it's not actually, it's actually two sessions from now. It's, it's going to be 24 hours from now. Oh yeah, okay. okay. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, the three o'clock Jerusalem time, Tuesday, right? Yes. No. No, no it's, <laughs> it's 6 a.m. Jerusalem time tomorrow, Sue. Okay, you can announce it clearly. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it's two sessions from now. The family watch is 3 p.m. on Monday, and we'll be back 6 a.m. Tuesday morning. Yeah. And Jerusalem time. So I the last announcement is we are gonna uh, I'm very riveted towards this year's summit at Heron Hunt. They have been so gracious to um, have us invite us in for a summit on a yearly basis. It'll be August 9th through the 16th um, and we will be starting prayer calls into this um, after the 21 days. We'll announce that the, just after the journey sessions. Um, <clears throat> and there are a number of things we have to coordinate in order to get this going, but we will be starting weekly sessions, uh, prayer sessions on this. So um, anyway, God is turning the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers. The generations are leaning into the, these difficult times in, in ways that we have not seen before. We're going to see difficulties like we've not seen before, but we're also going to see amazing, amazing in, uh, interventions by God himself. That's my, where my faith is for the coming times. I'm very excited. I am concerned, but I'm also very excited to know that God is with us, and greater is he who is within us than he who is in the world. And he is Jesus, the spirit of Elijah is rising, and he's coming. Why? For the restoration of all things. And that's my word, and I'm sticking to it tonight like never before. Amen. Fred, it's over to you. Okay, we're, we're almost at the end of the uh, hour here. So we'll have very little time. I just want to have our favorite um, commenter in the watch. That would be Jenny Haggart. Would you like to give, uh, give some comments? And then we'll, um, we'll maybe have one or two other people and then we'll, uh, we'll pray and close off in prayer. Well, this was a, a, a wonderful time of sharing. These are the keys of the kingdom. These are the things that the Lord is laying out for us all to, to know and, and, and to walk in. Can I just share um, a, te a brief testimony? Here we are walking in victory in days of adversity. And a lot of things happened in my life that I walked through that I realized are prophetic. Mm -hmm. And last Friday... Uh, my husband and I were booked to go out for lunch for our wedding anniversary and we decided to book in at Victory Hotel, which is near where we're staying at the moment, on top of a hill, Victory Hotel. 
in the morning, unbeknown to me, the Lord spoke to my husband and said he was to especially pray for safety, <coughs> excuse me, on the road. Brian didn't tell me. He just, he didn't want to worry me in any way. He just felt that what the Lord was warning him to pray. As we were going up to this Victory Hotel, we came around a corner of a main road and heading towards us on the wrong side of the road was a um, vehicle coming at us very fast. That is terror. When you see that, there's nothing you can do. We were about to have a horrific um, collision. And at the last minute, he suddenly seemed to realise what he was doing and he swerved and just missed us and we went on uh, up to the hotel and had a lovely meal and time together but then the Lord began to speak to me and say the pattern because we're walking in victory in days of adversity the Lord weren't warned <clears throat> of the adversity so my husband head of the household took that seriously with the Lord and prayed and so then when that attack came on us, the angels of the Lord were able to quickly deliver us out of it and we went on to victory. So I'm holding on to that. I feel the Lord is encouraging us all the obedience to pray when he says to pray. What if my husband had thought, oh, no, Jenny's a good driver, we're fine, you know, whatever. <laughs> but I think that call, when he calls us to pray, then that is a vital key for us all in walking ahead in victory in days of adversity. Wow, Jenny, that's an incredible uh, testimony. Um, that, that's that's like a power encounter, Jenny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Well, let's thank God for that. There, some of you are under it. Father, I'm praying for power encounters because we overcome what? This by the word of our testimony. That's why we brought that out tonight. That's not yeah. about us. It's about glorifying God. I mean, it's a miracle what happened here. It's, it's absolutely a miracle. Complete yeah. miracle. Complete. Uh, and another key thing in it all is to always give God the glory. Yes. And Brian yeah. and I, we knew it was a miracle. We knew that we probably wouldn't be here if, if the Lord had not intervened. So um we are rejoicing but that is the pattern of where we're going as sue said adversity but glory and we felt we were so peaceful afterwards it was supernatural i mean mm -hmm. we went in and sat down and enjoyed the meal most people would be <laughs> in such a state of trauma but it was we just knew the father is watching over us no matter what happens and Brian's obedience to pray. I, I'm so blessed to have a husband like that. Yes, there's, there's several there's several lessons from this. Um, uh, one of them, of course, is that uh, it's not your time yet, Jenny. So um, we're 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 very thankful for that. There's no no retirement in the spirit, only refirement. Yeah, yeah. and it's very clear that God has that the best days of your life and your ministry along with your husband, are yet ahead of you and not behind you. And so we just are in agreement for that. But it also is one of the lessons is when the Lord is prompt, when the Holy Spirit is prompting you to pray, you need to pray and, and, and not delay. That's point two. Point three is that we are in a war and the enemy wants to take us out however he can. And we really need to be praying Psalm 91 over ourselves and um, praying that no weapon formed against us will prosper. That is our individual responsibility in the watch, and we must take that seriously. I think m many of us already do, but it doesn't hurt to have a reminder that that we are we're fighting a battle, and there's a there's a corporate battle, but there's also an individual battle that we need to fight. So, um, Jenny, if you would just pray, uh, just a just a just a prayer over us of just protection and, 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 and wisdom and that we would really hear from the Lord and be obedient to him and when he calls us to pray. We really appreciate that. Well, Father, we just thank you.
that you watch over us. Um, you never stop watching over us. <coughs> and thank you, Father, for the warning that you, you spoke to Brian and that he was obedient uh, for that prayer to be released into the situation. And so, Lord, I, I pray uh, protection over all of us here on the Global Watch. Thank you. You are watching over us all, Lord God, and you're teaching us your ways, your kingdom ways. You're saying this is the way, walk ye in it. And you're teaching us not to be terrified when terrifying things happen towards us, that you are there in the very midst of it all. So, Lord, thank you. Uh, for your faithfulness to us. Thank you. And thank you that you give us these wonderful testimonies that do glorify your name, that we give you all the praise, all the honour, all the glory uh, for, for the victories that we, we in advance are thanking you for the victories that we're going to see in 2024. And you're teaching us how to prepare and to walk in those victories. <laughs> so bless you, Father. And bless all of us, Lord. We're a family here. Bless us as a family. And whether it's during the middle of the night or early in the morning or during the day, let us hear your voice when we are to pray for somebody. Uh, and if we don't know how to pray, just help us to speak in tongues until we get the release, Lord, and know that we've done your will. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' wonderful, wonderful name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jenny. And tell, uh... Tell Brian that he's a good husband, and uh, <laughs> which he is. And uh, amen. Yes, amen. So, um, Susan Rao, uh, do you have any announcements before we close? Yes, um, we will have a daily brief um, after the 3 p.m. watch on Monday, Jerusalem time. And normally, um, uh, Josie and David Silver have it. I got a note from her just a, a while ago that their son. <laughs> came back from Gaza for a break, <laughs> who's been fighting. So they can't do the watch, uh, the daily brief. But I would say as watchmen in the nations, I would encourage you all to get on, uh, to come back for the that daily brief at least. And the family watches right before that into the daily brief. Um, and uh, Shirley will help lead that. You guys can seek the Lord on what you want to pray about, but I would suggest praying for the this the soldiers it, it's cold now and it's several it's months into the war, a war now time when people get weary and so um th there could be a lot of benefit from praying right then amen amen thank you dear okay so um uh hannah corser how would you like to close us off in prayer we'll give you the last word Oh, what a gift. You'll be sorry, Fred. I just, Sue, honestly, I'm catching something in the spirit here that is so exciting because I said to him, what's going on with Sue? And he said, can you, can you sense that? And I said, yes, she's a general. And he said, no, no, she was a general before tonight. And I said, so what's happening? And he said, this is the militancy of leadership that I'm calling out right now. The militancy oh, of the on. I'm calling the watchman to rise up into this. She's a military leader. We're going, we're at war. Are. so i feel that i sense that and i just want to bless you for your courage and just moving with it because as you went through the call it just kept accelerating and jenny was catching it and i feel what she's carrying too and i'm i just want to encourage everyone because lately i've been praying a lot in tongues a lot more in tongues i just run out of words i'm never really sure i, I exhaust my words and then the tongues just have to come but i'm picking up names of people on the global watch in my tongues so i thought jenny thank you for bringing that up tonight I, I there was one in particular that just kept coming up and and with it was coming something of a burden so i reached out to this person in another nation and yes we are developing a wonderful relationship because of that connection so he's going to be building more of this community spirit by oh, having us pick up the burdens of each other so be aware of that you'll be getting dreams you'll be getting visions you'll be getting words and tongues you'll be getting names of other brethren and we are to cover one another's backs. We're to have one another in our corner, right? This is what we are. We are at war and we're a team just, oops, I just froze. Are you getting my audio? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Oh, Fred, you didn't shut me out. <laughs> good, good. 
good. Okay, well, you're, you're all frozen, so I wasn't sure. But Father, we are so thankful for this community. We're so thankful for this family. And we're so thankful that we're that these are the warriors we track with now, that this is our our team. This is our SWAT team, or, or what did you call it, the, your American? Oh, seals. Special yeah, seals. The SEALs. Well, I don't know about SEALs because I would call us eagles instead but, because we're up in the heavenlies. But I'm so thankful for everyone on this call, Father. I just pray that the excitement and the call out from our leadership tonight is so felt and so moved with don't let this go. This fire that's burning right now is very much from him. He's calling something out tonight and we need to respond to it. Thank you, Abba. Thank you so much. And thank you, Sue and Fred. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, you know what? You're picking up on something that I didn't know I had, but I'm, I'm thankful that you articulated it so well. <laughs> but I do feel a fire in my spirit because there is fire coming. There's fire that's going to drive us. It's going to refire us <laughs> and wipe the dust off our shelves. Listen, if God gives you a name of a person and it just puts it in your head, start praying for that. This past week, I started praying for a couple uh, in our church that I, they're a younger couple that have been not able to have a baby. And uh, we prayed for them in the past and God put her in my mind this week and I started praying for them and I thought, I wonder what's going on. This Today, she came running up to me full of joy and she said, guess what? I said, you're pregnant. <laughs> God, it's not always on our time, but in God's time it is. But all I'm saying is, is absolutely, Hannah, it's happening. Pray in tongues. If somebody gives you something, reach out to that person. Let's start doing it, guys. We're breaking down the walls of communication, disregard, and apathy. And I'm speaking to myself. We're got, I, if that was an alert to me, Lord, I, help me to understand why you're putting people on my heart. <laughs> it's, it's important this hour. Amen? Amen. Fire of God is all over this. We thank you, Lord, for a great hour. We just say, Lord, that we're not going to be the same as a result. So, Lord, we're just declaring that, the, that what was what was prophesied, what was taught, what was um, what was uh, transmitted tonight is falling on good soil. And all of us are gonna be different. Lord, you are in fact raising, um, training up our hands for war and our fingers for battle. And we thank you for that, Lord. We just say, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered around the world in the global watch. And let the joy of the Lord be our strength. And all God's people said, Amen. Everybody, amen. Amen. Bless you all. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you.